Now, as we start using objects and their attributes and methods more and more, we're going to start to see why it is that they are so useful and so loved by programmers. Now, I think one of the non-programmers that explained OOP the best is actually the late Steve Jobs. And he has this brilliant example that makes it really clear why objects are so great. In his story, he talks about this concept where, let's say you were traveling to Japan and after a long flight, you finally land and you go outside and there's beautiful cherry blossoms, Mount Fuji's looking wonderful. But unfortunately, on the flight, you had soiled your t-shirt. You were overly eager with the tomato juice and you spilled everything on yourself. So what do we do? Well, you're in this unfamiliar city and you have no idea even where the hell you are, let alone where to find the nearest dry cleaners or laundrette. And plus, on top of that, you don't have the local currency. They take yen, but you only have pounds and you don't even speak Japanese. So what do you do? It's going to be a real struggle trying to solve this problem. Well, you're staying at a hotel, right? And the hotel staff probably speak English. So you go to the receptionist and you tell the hotel that, hey, my t-shirt is soiled. And they say, hey, no problems. We'll take that from you and we'll go and handle all of that messy stuff. We know how to find the dry cleaners. We can pay them in the local currency and we speak the local language. And what you get back is just a nice clean t-shirt. So this is similar to the process of working with objects. Essentially, if you have this hotel object, which has a blueprint for how to handle dry cleaning, some sort of clothing, then all you have to do is just get the object hotel and then call its associated method dry clean. And then it will do all of the messy stuff for you. And you don't have to worry about the implementation of this function at all. So now you can work with multiple objects, getting them to do different things and trust that they know how to manage their data and how to perform the necessary functionality. Coming back to a problem that we've already solved, creating that coffee machine with all of the program requirements. Well, it's time to put our object oriented programming knowledge to the test because we're going to be making a OOP version of our coffee machine. Now, the program still has the same requirements as before. You have to print reports for all the resources. You have to check the resources are sufficient, process coins, check transaction is successful, and finally make coffee. But in this case, you're going to be working with objects. In the course resources, you'll find a link to the starting project for the OOP coffee machine. So if you head over to this link, you can see that there's a whole bunch of code that we've already written for you. Now, the idea here is you're not going to touch any of these other files, the money machine, the menu, or the coffee maker. All of that code has already been written for you, and it's almost like you're working with an external library. You're just gonna trust that they do what they say they do. And you'll find a link to this coffee machine documentation that I've created, which describes in detail what each of these classes or blueprints allow you to do. So once you construct an object from the menu item class, then you have access to the name attribute, the cost attribute, ingredient attribute, and there's also descriptions of what it should do and what an example might be. You have access to all of these classes and you can build objects from each of these classes to solve this project. In order to work with PyCharm, all you need to do is to download the zip file with all the starting code from our course resource website. Alternatively, if you're already logged in on Replit, simply fork the project and then click on these three dots to download the zip file here. Now, once you found that in your downloads folder, all you have to do is uncompress or unzip it. And then you can go into PyCharm and open it here. So click on the open button and then navigate to where you had that folder downloaded. Remember, it needs to be unzipped. If you're on Windows, right click the zip file and choose extract all, then click extract. You should see an unzipped folder pop up next to your zip file. 
If you're on Mac, then all you need to do is just double click on the .zip file. Now, if we click open on that folder, then it will open up this project. And when you open up the project folder, you'll see all of the same files. Now you're only going to be working from the main.py. In fact, I don't even want you to care that much about the code that's in the other files. It has class definitions and a whole bunch of other things that we're going to learn about in the next lesson. But for now, I want you to treat it as if it is an external library, which you're just going to use. At the very beginning of the main.py file, I've already imported all four classes that you're going to be using. Menu, menu item, coffee maker, and money machine. Now, all of these classes are documented in the coffee machine documentation website. All you have to do is head over to this website and read through what each of the classes do. Some of them have attributes and methods, others just have methods. So each of these classes have already pre-written code that do a lot of the heavy lifting and all of the code that we had to write when we wrote the coffee machine code from scratch. But this time you're only going to be using these four classes and the objects created from them in order to achieve exactly the same goals as before. So while the goals are fresh in your mind from the previous day, you should review the code from the previous day and then have a read of the documentation and see how you would implement exactly the same project, but this time using only the objects created from these classes. You'll need to spend some time on this because you'll need to think through how to create objects from these blueprint classes and then how to use the objects, how to call the methods and the logic that's required to put everything together. Pause the video now, have a think about this problem and try to make the coffee machine do exactly the same and have all the same functionality as the coffee machine that you created in yesterday's project.